So in this lecture we are going to cover the normal distribution and specifically we are going to look into how we based on data can calculate the confidence interval for the mean parameter of the normal distribution. So the learning objective is to calculate the to be able to calculate the confidence interval for the mean and the normal distribution and know the t distribution and how it differs from the normal distribution. So the setup is like this. We have a population and that's what and that is what we want to know something about. But it is so that we cannot measure everything in this population. So what we do is we take out a sample, a few individually which are sampled independently, and then we do some descriptive statistics on those samples. We calculate the mean, the variation, and so forth. Then we use those descriptive measures to tell something about the original population where the samples were sampled from, and that is called inference. So the normal distribution for a sample, we use the sample to tell something about the distributions. So what parameters are essential in characterizing this guy up here? Well, we know that the normal distribution have a mean and it has a spread. So the mean of the, and the standard deviation is important to be able to characterize this distribution. In reality, we do not know the true distribution, but we have this sample of, in this case, 30 samples, which are drawn from the population, and then we use these guys to calculate the parameters for the normal distribution. So naturally, we would say, well, the mean is the mean of the, or the average of the sample, so the 30 measures here, there is a mean height of 185.1, and we use the standard deviation calculated on these 30 samples to calculate, to set the standard deviation of the normal distribution. But how certain are we on these estimates and what influences this precision? So naturally we would think that the more samples we have here, the more certain are we that the mean calculated from the samples are actually close to the mean of the true distribution in the population. Um, so let's see how this is done schematically. Um, so what we say is that we have some samples which are drawn from the normal distribution. In this case we have n samples. We say that they are drawn from the population and they are normally distributed with these parameters. So the center and the spread. And the case is that we really don't know these guys here. But what we do is, is we calculate the mean based on these samples here and we calculate the standard deviation based on these samples here. So in this case we have sampled 30 times and we get a mean of 180.5 and we get a standard deviation of 6.9. Okay, now we would like to calculate a confidence interval for the mean. So we write a confidence interval for the mean, the parameter in the distribution, and we say, well, we would like to give some bands around which we expect the mean, the true mean to be. So obviously, as we have calculated the mean from the sample, we'd say, well, I would suspect that mu is quite close to the average of the sample. So it's close to these 185.1. Uh, so the confidence interval is centered around the observed average and with some bands around it. So plus and minus some entity. This entity is a t value which is denoted like this. Then we say, well, if the standard deviation of the sample is big, then we would expect the standard deviation or the spread around the mean also to be big. So we multiply by the standard deviation of the sample here. Furthermore, we would expect 
that the average of these samples are well estimated if we have large n and poorly estimated if we have a small n. So we divide by the square root of the number of samples and that will give us the confidence interval. So if we chug in the numbers, we see that we will get um, a confidence interval of 185.1, so the average, plus minus 2.58. So from 182-ish to 188 approximately. So what is this number here? This is the t-value at some level of confidence. So what does, what does that mean? So the t-value is like the normal distribution. So where we say, well, we would like the area in here to be 1 minus alpha. And alpha is, in this case, 0 0.05. So this is 1 minus 0 0.05. That is the area here. And then the t-value, that is what we read off at this point on the x-axis. So this point here is the t-value at 1 minus alpha divided by 2. Um, the t-value, so, so this one is equal to 2.045. The t-value is centered around 0 here and reflects how much coverage we need to have for the confidence interval and in this case we want it to be 95 coverage and then the t value also reflects how well are the data uh, the parameters uh, estimated in this case well means how many samples are used so the t distribution is this distribution it's centered around zero and it scales to have standard deviation 1. Different from the normal distribution, the t distribution depends on a parameter referred to as degrees of freedom. And this degrees of freedom takes into account how well the standard deviation is estimated. So what we see here is that the more samples we have in our data, reflected as the degrees of freedom, the closer to the standard normal distribution the t-distribution becomes. So this is where we have 3 degrees of freedom, and this is where we have 30 degrees of freedom, and the red distribution here is the standard normal distribution. So if you want a 95% uh, confidence interval, usually you will have a t-value around 2. So in this case we had 2.05, but a value around 2 is usually what you would multiply the standard deviation with in calculating of the confidence interval. So one thing to be very clear about here when we talk about a confidence interval is that we have two distributions. We have the distribution which reflects the population and then we have a distribution which distribution which reflect the parameters from the population. So the mean value has a different normal distribution than the population distribution. So here to in a condensed form we have the confidence interval for the mean. So when the parameters are unknown that is the case where we actually want to learn them from the data we know that from the central limit theorem that the average is normal distributed with the center and the variance of the standard deviation of the distribution divided by n as n goes to infinity. So that means for a finite sample, that is a draw for instance of 30 samples or 50, we have this form where the standardized form the average minus mi, mu divided by the standard deviation of the distribution and the square root is t distributed. And that leads to this confidence interval. So it's centered around the observed mean plus minus some fractal, which is around 2. Uh, 
times the standard deviation divided by how well is uh, the mean estimated, how big is the population. Let's see how this is done in R. So what I have here is some I have some data here and this is from the class the students were asked to to guess how much I weigh the lecture weigh and there were 59 students that day and they were um, guessing how much the lecturer was weighing so let's see what their guess is so their guess is from 55 up to 90 and, distri and uh, distributed around the center around 70 approximately so in this case we would like to calculate a confidence interval for the mean of this distribution so we could calculate the mean for x and that will be 74.7.8 we could calculate the standard deviation of x, and that is 5. And if we want to calculate a confidence interval for the mean, that's this guy here, we simply just use the t-test on this vector of measurements. So if we calculate the t-test for this one, we'll get a lot of stuff out which is not interesting. For instance, the t-test here in itself is testing whether the average is zero, which is not meaningful at all. But what it also returns here is a 95 confidence interval for the mean. So the mean was 74.8, and with a confidence interval from 73.4 to 76.1. That means that the true weight of the lecture is by 90% certainty within these values. I can tell that indeed the true weight of the lecture is within these values because it's 75.2. But this is the general way the confidence interval is calculated. You could also do it by gluing these measurements together and calculating a t fractal using r to get exactly the same answer um, but it is nicely built in into this t-test function just be aware of that the t statistics up here the test doesn't make sense at all why in the world would you like to test whether the mean is zero of a guy which is walking around on his feet 